Welcome to this flex training video. I'm your host, Marcus Merritt. Today we're going to be talking about the resource type settings menu. At default, your system is set up with a set amount of resources or managed resources in a way that we think works for most customers. But you may want to adjust those settings, um, add uh, or delete resource types, etc. And so we want to talk about how you can do that for yourself. Now, for your managed resources, there's three main categories that they fall into, and those align with the three main sections in your resource browser. Those are contacts, inventory, and services. Okay. Now, for this, we're going to go ahead and get to the menu. On that, we go to the main menu, system settings, and we're going to scroll down alphabetically to resource types. Okay. So we'll see here again the grid of all the existing resource types that are in my system. And we see again they fall into those categories, contacts, inventory, services. There are a couple down here for maintenance, and we're not going to really talk about those a lot in this uh, thing. We're going to focus on those three main categories. Uh, you'll see in here where uh, if I want to even more adjust, I can filter by those sections um, as needed. Um, but I don't really need to in this. Now, if uh, existing ones uh, are good, but I maybe want to rename or adjust some settings, I can just double click to pop that open. If I want to rename client to customer, um, something else related to that, we can do that. Um, if instead I want to change the order of something in here, maybe I want my uh, venues to be higher in my list, and so I could come here and grab the handle, this first column, and I can move around. You can also do parent-child relationships on these. I don't personally find that very helpful a lot of times, though there are some times in these services where that can make sense. Um, but I'm not going to get into too much of the detail on that. I just want to show that it is possible. You can also use the three-dot menu on these to be able to open the edit screen, the same as double-clicking. You can add a child resource or delete an existing one if you don't need that resource type anymore. Note that as most things in Flex, uh, deletes are soft deletes, so I can then still click to show deleted only, find it, undelete it, etc. Okay? So with that, being fairly straightforward, I just want to get into a few of the specific settings in these and uh, make sure we explain what they mean and get into that. For this, I'm just going to go ahead and pop open the labor and look at that and go through the settings uh, within here. Okay, so for this, we see fairly straightforward uh, the name and the name plural. That's just whatever you want it to be. And telling the system, the system knows when it's supposed to display in a plural, when it's supposed to display in a singular, and uses whatever you do for that. Uh, so you can adjust whatever you want that to be called. Okay. Um, the availability mode is going to have to do with uh, what is going on for any availability calculation. Okay, Labor and staffing is going to make things available for the staffing module, the labor module with the crew calls. Permanent assets are generally your rental inventory, your rental assets. Temporary are to do with your sub-rental um, uh, assets on that, things that are coming in, but you're expecting them to leave and go out. Outgoing would be retail or things that when they go, they are not coming back or that's not the expectation. So consumables um, or retail as in the default settings for that. And then incoming is when we use for that rental or retail back order of we have plans for this to come. It should then become a permanent asset likely or maybe an outgoing asset because it is the retail back order. So that's there. We do see a lot of the other services have no availability mode because they are just for financial lines for quoting purposes. But this labor is for labor and staffing. So we have that. We do need to pick what's the applicable resource type of where it goes towards. Again, that's mostly, is it a contact, an inventory, or a service? There are some things where you can make things specific to serial number, maintenance, or locations. But again, most of the time, we stick with those top three line ones of contacts, inventory, or services. Okay. The next is expendable type. Now, an important thing on this, and there's a few other that are the same, is you can only have one expendable type. Okay, so in here, um, that is in my system, it is this retail. 
Okay, that is my expendable type. If I go and try to change something else to the expendable type, let's say I decide to change rental to my expendable type, the system, when I go to save this, is going to let me know retail is currently set as the expendable type, and this is gonna override that. So I have to say I agree and yes to change that. I do not wanna change that, I'm gonna leave that there. Okay, I'm gonna cancel out and go back to that. What that expendable type means, it's actually fairly simple. Okay, generally for your expendable type, you will have the availability mode as outgoing asset, but you can have other things as outgoing asset. What the key of expendable type and why there can only be one is in the inventory models, there is a way to say is expendable. And all that does is connect to this and say, if I put this item on, no matter what the default resource type for that document that I put it on, the quote, I want this to override and change to be the expendable type, okay? So you technically in your system can have retail and expendable or consumable. They can both be outgoing assets, but only one can be the expendable type that will force override that resource type. Okay, so that's what that does and why there can only be one of those. The next in here, employee type, okay? Again, there can only be one. And it's just there's some fields to say, we want to force override to not just look at anyone in the contact uh, uh, hierarchy, anyone in the contact database, but we want to look only at the specific sections of the employees, okay? And so because of that, only one resource type can be the employee type, and it will give us that same warning on there, okay? Um, on the note type, that is the same. Now, notes are generally still there, applicable to services, but they're saying, well, I'm not using this as a financial line anymore. I'm using this as a way to put more text into uh, the document in a quick and easy way. And so in that same way, it can only be set to one thing can be the note type, and it will override and give you that uh, number there. If uh, within any of these, you can choose to uh, number them, okay? Um, uh, this uh, is not super common um, in things, but there are some places where people will use it, mostly in inventory, though some companies may choose to do that with their employees. They have the employee numbers or co customer numbers. And then you can give them a caption and a numbering scheme if that is something that you choose to do. Okay. Um, the next on here is to enable venue extensions. Now, again, generally, we're only going to put this on venue, right? And this just turns on a few fields. This turns on the ability to have facilities. This turns on the ability to have some other fields that are related to venues where you can put uh, capacity um, and other information that you might only put about a venue space versus a contact or a customer, okay? Um, then the next are fairly straightforward here. Um, is it taxable if it's a contact line? Now, it, I mean, excuse me, a financial line on this. Again, generally the inventory and services are going to be financial lines. The contact you're not actually dragging onto there. You're not usually using as financial. They're not gonna be applicable either way. Um, but in there, just setting, is that supposed to be taxable or not, okay? Um, discountable, yes or no. Again, only for financial lines, not really uh, applicable to the contact sections, but you can then say whether it's discountable or not. In the default settings, generally the inventory ones are discountable and taxable. These services are not, but if that is not correct for you where you're at, very simple to open and update those to be applicable, okay? Uh, the next in here, call time enabled. Call time enabled will be required, again, if you want to use this for the labor module and you want to schedule labor with that. You need to have call times so that you can then have what's the time frame that you're going to book that person for. Uh, there are other settings with how that displays, and I'm not going to get into that today. That will be when we get into the project element uh, menus. Okay. And then just a note is this is a different way. And again, I don't want to get too much detail into this, but if you are uh, currently uh, syncing with QuickBooks or in the future when we are able to uh, sync with other accounting softwares, these sales accounts and purchases accounts are a different way where you can update the GL accounts that again, if this is a financial line 
added to a uh, line, you can put that on there. Um, if it is not, then you can leave it blank. Uh, this system is not really connected to any. This is also for the note. Notes are not financial lines, and that is why that is blank um, in there. So that's kind of the detail there. Okay. As you see, it's fairly straightforward. The only things I really think that is kind of uh, a little less clear are those three sections that are only one thing can have that. So as we see in here, the retail is my one expendable type. My employee is my one employee type. And then my notes are my one note type. Okay. Uh, if you uh, have any questions relative to this, um, you can always reach out to training at flexrentalsolutions.com. You can uh, find this uh, video on our help center and you can ask questions there. Or uh, you can always reach out to support at flexrentalsolutions.com for additional help. Thank you very much. Have a great day.